You know, it feels good to make a million, but it really sucks to lose a million dollars. And in the game of real estate, I've done both. Today, I'm going to share with you the five most important lessons that I've learned after investing in real estate for 20 years. We're talking over $2 billion worth of real estate on thousands of deals. If you don't know who I am, my name is Chris Crone, and I started investing in real estate in 2003. So that's over 20 years ago. You're old. Ah, fake laugh, hiding real pain. The first lesson, location, location, location. Like you've heard this before, real estate doesn't behave the same everywhere you go. Like even where you live, there's kind of like a that part of town and then there's the amazing part of town. And the reality is that there's a path of progress where you live and if you own real estate in that location, it's going to appreciate better. It's gonna be more desirable. It's gonna be better taken care of. Now years ago, I stopped buying real estate where I live because I went out of state. And today, my entire portfolio that I built makes me all of this money because I've learned how to buy in the very best locations. But the way that I learned that lesson was by first going out of state. This was after the 2008 crisis. And in 2009, a couple of government agencies, Fannie and Freddie, were actually selling a list of homes. It was almost 200 properties. They were listing them at a 92% discount. I basically had a chance to buy a couple hundred homes for a million bucks. And I needed another million bucks to kind of like fix them up and renovate them. But it was a sweet deal. Many months later. I'm not okay. I'm not okay. <clears throat> I'm sad. A couple years later, I lost a million dollars by trying to liquidate the portfolio and get out of it as fast as I could because the location that I had bought in was not a good location. And that's the first time I learned this lesson. Just because it's a really good deal doesn't mean you want to own it in that spot. So if you've ever heard people talk about how risky real estate is and how you can lose your short or how it can be a landlording nightmare, they're not wrong. And there's a good chance that they ended up buying that property in the wrong location. On the other hand, I've learned how to find the right locations for buying real estate, and now I buy thousands of homes in those areas, and guess what? They are top performers. They earn the highest ROIs. In fact, in the last decade, we just concluded a 10-year study on 2,400 homes, and my average ROI is over 60% per year. If you're a little curious whether that's good or bad, well, your savings account pays you 0 .0 nothing percent. Your 20-year average on your 401k is 4.2%. Your IRA is probably around 6%, and the S&P is gonna drop you right around 8%. Your money growing in those single digits over the course of your 40-year working life, on average, at the age of 65, turns into $254,000, which, by the way, is not even 10% of what you actually need for retirement. By the way, if we're talking about where to buy real estate, like not necessarily where you live, but statewide between red states and blue states, always buy in a red state. The second secret that has made me more money than anything else in the game of real estate has been learning this. Focus on ROI. It stands for return on investment. It means that you put money out and you learn how to calculate what comes back to you. Let me show you exactly what I mean. Let's just say for a moment that you're making an investment of $50,000. It could be from a 401k or an IRA, and you're gonna put it in an investment property. It represents a 20% down payment. And let's just also say that this house over time ends up making you $100,000. Well, what I wanna do right now is I wanna show you how to calculate your ROI. All right, so check it out. If I take my total gain, which means the money that came back to me, or in other words, my return on investment, my return is $100,000. If I divide it by my original investment of $50,000 and times it by 100, it's actually gonna tell me what my total ROI is. So here we go, I'm gonna put in 100,000, I'm gonna divide it by 50,000, it equals two, I'm gonna times it by 100, and it equals 200. That is a 200% ROI. And let's say it took me five years to get this 200%. I'm gonna divide it by five to figure out what my annual ROI is. And on this property, I'm earning 40% a year on my money. Not bad. The reason why it's so important for you to be able to calculate your ROI, your return on investment, is because there's a lot of novices that will say, oh, let's do this deal because I think it has good positive cash flow. Or, you know what, I'm getting it at a discount. That's probably reason enough to buy this deal. Or, well, I've heard that owning real estate has tax benefits, so let's just do the deal. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's a lot of newbies to the game of real estate that get in on the wrong deals because they don't know how to calculate their ROI. By the way, if you want to learn how to calculate your ROI on a deal you're looking at, or if you want to look at some of my deals that I can give to you, click the link below and learn all about it. It's free.
at the end of the day, they call it crunching the numbers. And it's basically your way of saying, if I'm a real estate investor, I got to know how to do a little bit of math so that I can basically figure out how much money I'm going to make so I can know whether to pull the trigger or not. That is a must and an essential. Never, never, never touch a real estate deal unless you know how to calculate the potential ROI. Chris, what kind of ROI should I look for to whether to do the deal or not? For me, my minimum is a 25% annual ROI. And you might be wondering why. I'm gonna tell you. If you earn 25% in real estate, you make 27 times more money over 20 years compared to your 401k. And that makes the difference between retiring with a couple hundred grand versus a few million bucks. Third most important lesson that I learned in the last 20 years of investing in real estate, do your due diligence. That's right, when you get your hands on a deal and you get it under contract, you've got a period of time before you buy it. And you shouldn't just be twiddling your thumbs. You should actually be running the numbers and looking at the house and doing your due diligence. Now, doing your due diligence ranges everything from having an inspector go out and look at the property to make sure that you didn't buy a house with a leaky roof or making sure that the appliances, for example, come with it because if all of a sudden after closing they walk off, you have to go spend a couple thousand dollars at Home Depot or Lowe's and then it's just like, well, that was money I wasn't expecting to have on my pocket. Or who's checking the foundation to make sure that you don't have any weird cracks or problems that could literally cost you tens of thousands of dollars to fix. Due diligence is really about making sure that this property really adds up, that you're gonna get the rent on it that you think you are, that the property's in the condition that you assume that it is, and ultimately you're getting ready. Now here's a little secret, don't ever trust the due diligence of a non-professional. Because you might have your brother that comes over, he's like, oh yeah, like, Dude, I swing a hammer. I totally know houses. Let me tell you my opinion of this house. That's not an inspection. Or here's another one. I trusted my real estate agent. They told me that everything was fine on the house and then it actually wasn't. Now, technically a real estate agent is a professional, but they don't necessarily have your best interests in mind because at the end of the day, they're actually there to earn a commission. I like to have a true third party that can come in and walk me through. For example, if you're buying this as an investment property, then honestly, you should have a mentor, some investor that's very experienced that is at your side, making sure you're doing it the right way. The fourth thing that I've learned, you gotta have a strategy. Here's an awful strategy. Well, I think we're gonna flip this deal and then we're gonna rent this one and how about we develop this land over here and build a sky rise over there? It's like, no, that's not a strategy. That is all of the strategies. And if you try to become a jack of all trades, you'll become a master of none. And in real estate, if you don't have enough mastery or a partner with mastery, you can get spanked so hard. So you gotta have a strategy. Now, I wrote this book all about the number one strategy of how I make all of my money in real estate, and the good news is I'm giving you this book away for free. It's in the link below. It's just another option of how to play with me and grab some amazing life-changing knowledge to help you make millions of dollars in real estate. But here's what it basically says. The shortcut is, for me, if I buy single-family homes, if I buy them below the median for your area, so if your median is $400,000, I usually buy them about 30% below the median, so between $250,000 and $300,000. And then I buy the single family homes that are usually like a three to four bedroom, a two to three bathroom. And then lastly, I like to buy them, like we talked about location, 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 in the best part of town, or for me, in the top five markets in the nation. And when I do this on a short term buy and hold, that's when I win and I make the most money. Rent it out cash flow that sucker and make the money rain. And I know what you're thinking, Chris, like what about Airbnb or what about multifamily or what about some of the other real estate strategies like flipping? For me at the end of the day, I haven't found a consistent strategy that produces this high of an ROI. The fifth lesson is perhaps the most important lesson and it's the one that has saved my bacon more than anything. Don't go it alone. Don't be a lone wolf. If you've never done this before, you gotta find an expert. And if you don't have an expert, you gotta go and get one. I know what you're thinking, but Chris, I read your real estate book and I've been watching on YouTube for a little bit. Like, can I just go do it myself? And truth is, there is a chance that you're gonna be just fine. But if you do make a mistake, it can cost you everything. Like the entire farm. You can imagine over the years, I've had a chance to interview a lot of used to be real estate investors. And if you wanna know the number one thing that killed them in the game, it was that they tried to play it all by themselves. It's also the reason why I've created kind of a unique market for myself, where I actually partner with people all over the world and say, hey, I got a team of 200 experts. We already know the best locations and the highest ROIs. We'll just do it for you. And if you wanna know what that looks like, click the link below, let me show you how. Listen, I hope you enjoyed today's video. And today I did talk a little bit about 401k and maybe that was news for you how I disparaged them, but that's because a 401k is a scam and there's six major reasons why 
And if you didn't know it was a scam, then you should click right here and watch this video so I can tell you real quick.